Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in church dogmatics by Emil Brunner, first published in German in 1946. We're going to look at a very, very short chapter, chapter 9, uh, 231, 239, eight pages, that was it. So a very short chapter on the fullness of time. So it's, uh, again, something not normally found in systematic theology that Bruner felt was important enough to address. So, again, not normally found in systematic theology. But let's go to block one, and let's begin by taking a look at understanding the divine teleology, the divine telos. The divine telos. God's purpose moves steadily forward, first in law, then through the Son, then through the Spirit. Galatians 4.4 4 is the famous verse, When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son. And Brunner also quotes Jeremiah 31, I will make a new covenant, putting my law into their hearts. I will be their God. A new covenant, which will restore direct communion with God. The law has served as a tutor preparing for Christ, but the new covenant will uh, restore direct personal relationship with God. The law prepared us for responsible freedom within an economy of salvation, taking place in the fullness of time. We reach freedom in the fullness of time as a righteousness of faith, not of works, but a righteousness of faith, through the incarnate living Lagos, the incarnate Christ. Israel was prepared for the coming Redeemer by Greek philosophy, Roman civilization, and dissatisfaction with tradition. All three prepared the way for Christ. Let's go on to block two. Again, block two is your heartbeat of this chapter, the heartbeat of this lesson, because this is uh, the descriptor of uh, what made up the fullness of time. Hellenism, Judaism, and universal language. Hellenism. The Mediterranean world was expecting a coming deliverer. There was a need for redemption that was almost universally felt and Greek philosophy and Jewish synagogues filled all of the various landscapes. Remember, the uh, dispersion put Jewish synagogues everywhere throughout the Roman Empire. The diaspora, the dispersion of the Jews, ended up spreading Jewish synagogues. So Greek philosophy and Jewish synagogues filled the entire Roman landscape. Judaism, there was an ongoing preaching of the prophets. That's important. There was a ministry going on. The synagogues proclaimed the prophets. Paul gained followers in the synagogues from the Gentile God-fearers that were attending the synagogues. Remember, Gentiles did attend. Uh, they were permitted to attend the synagogue worship as God-fearers. And they were the first of Paul's converts because he went to the synagogues first, and there he found followers, and he had, his first conver conversions were Gentile god -fears. So Jewish mission played a role in the fullness of time, as well as Greek mythology, Greek philosophy, and even paganism. And all of this took place within a universal language of Greek. Greek became the universal language. And that is extremely important. It played a significant role in the fullness of time. The Greek language prepared the way for the proclamation of the gospel. Jesus, who was born according to the flesh, meant that he was born within the historical context described above of Hellenism and Judaism, and he was born subject to the law. Let's move on to block three. 
So you can see that uh, the divine teleology, the divine telos, in order to prepare the way for Christ, prepared the way with uh, Hellenism, Greek philosophy, Jewish proclamation of the prophets, where God feared Gentiles were in attendance, and everyone spoke Greek. All right, block three, the historical fullness of time. It was a process based on the will of God as revealed meaningful history. Hilgeschichte in German. And this meaningful history tended toward Christ, toward life as wholly new in Christ. It was a history as, and remains a history as messianic. Our world history is interpreted through the light of Christ as promise and preparation for the coming of Christ and for the return of Christ. Cyrus, Plato, and Alexander all played a role in preparing for Christ. Remember, Cyrus liberated the Jewish people from Babylon, and Cyrus was known as who? He was known by his people as the Good Shepherd. Cyrus as a liberator, Plato as a philosopher, Alexander as representing Roman civilization, all played a role in preparing for the coming of Christ. The nations waited for Christ until the fulfillment of time. So quickly, we'll do a recap here, and in block one, the div divine teleology, let's go to two. The new covenant restored direct communion with God. It restored personal relationship with the Father. The law had been a temporary tutor preparing the way for the coming of Christ who would restore personal relationship with our Father in Heaven. The law prepared us for responsible freedom within God's economy of salvation. It all took place in the fullness of time, preparing the way for the coming of Christ, a Christ as person who revealed God as personal Father, a Christ as person who revealed God as personal Father. Only through Christ as person could God be revealed as personal, loving Father. Something entirely new definitely was not uh, present in the works righteousness of Judaism. But Christ proclaimed and restored personal relationship in love with God our Father. Now block two. I think language is going to be the most important. Note three, the Greek language as universal language played a significant role in the fullness of time. It prepared the way for the proclamation of the gospel. And Jesus, who was born according to the flesh, meant that he was born within the historical context of Hellenism and Judaism and born subject to the law. And he would become the Messiah as person who would overcome the temporary character of the law and restore personal relationship with God as our loving Father. Jesus told his disciples, Call Elohim our Father in heaven. And Jesus also proclaimed at the Last Supper, I leave you with one commandment, love one another as I have loved you. Live according to agape, self-sacrificial love. And then block three, uh, six, seven, eight, and nine. Our world history must be seen through the filter of the light of Christ. And if you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, you are empowered by the dunamis and energy of that Holy Spirit to see history as 
interpreted through the light of Christ as promise and preparation, and Cyrus, the good shepherd who liberated the Jews, Plato and his philosophy, Alexander and Roman civilization, all played a role in preparing the way for Christ. The nations waited for Christ until the fulfillment of time, and then God sent forth his Son as Messiah in person to restore personal relationship with our Father in Heaven. Very, very short lesson, but we're going to wrap it up there because it's only eight pages. We're not going to keep going here. That is a very, very short lesson, but that's going to wrap up 231 to 239, Chapter 9. And uh, next we travel on to Chapter 10a. Uh, we're going to take it in two parts. We're going to look at 239 to 249, Chapter 10a, next time. And that will wrap up Chapter 9 on the fullness of time.